The Battle of Raymond was fought on May 12, 1863, between elements of the Union Army of the Tennessee, under the overall command of Major General Ulysses S. Grant, with local command under Major General James B. McPherson, and elements of the Confederate Army of the Mississippi, under the overall command of Lieutenant General John C. Pemberton, with local command under Brigadier General John Gregg. Pemberton had planned to hold Grant's army along a broad line stretching along the 14 Mill Creek. To do this, it required him to consolidate all the men he could from the departments under his command into one force, a force that would be able to hold Grant's army until additional men could be brought up. Unknown to anyone in the Confederate Army was that the 17th Corps, which encompassed McPherson's two divisions, were already within 10 miles of the main Confederate body at Raymond. Upon hearing of the arrival of Confederate forces into the town, McPherson was ordered to use his force to drive the Confederates out and to capture the town. For this, the 20th Ohio was deployed into a skirmish line with one of its brigades making his way towards a bridge on the creek. John Gregg, upon hearing of this force, marched to meet what he assumed was merely a raiding party. He concealed his men on a hill overlooking the creek with the hopes of luring them across the bridge and slaughtering them once they were across. This force was soon discovered to be a full brigade rather than a small party. To counter this, Gregg was going to have two regiments ambush the Union infantry, while two more regiments went around and captured the artillery batteries on the opposite side of the creek, trapping the Union brigade between the two forces. A Union regiment was able to cross the creek quickly and got nearly destroyed by Gregg's trap. The two Confederate regiments, wild from their easy victory, stormed across the creek and engaged the Union battle line beyond the hills, pushing them back but themselves taking heavy casualties while attacking the 2nd Union line across superior numbers. The two regiments that had crept across to strike the Union from the rear ended up coming about face to two Union Reserve regiments. The Confederate men that had went across the creek were now in full retreat, with the two regiments holding back the whole Federal Division. Eventually, McPherson began to extend his right flank beyond the Confederate hilltop. The position having been turned and his right units reasonably reformed, Gregg ordered a withdrawal through Raymond towards Jackson. Here, the Federal artillery finally made its mark in the battle, pounding the Confederate ranks as Gregg continued the delay in action to allow his battered units to withdraw. As his disorganized force came scrambling over fences and through yards in raiment, they were met by the 3rd Kentucky Mounted Infantry and 800 Cavalry under the command of Wirt Adams, the leading elements of reinforcements heading to Raymond from all over the Confederacy. Help had arrived too late to do anything but provide rearguard protection to Gregg's spent force. The Union casualties came out to 68 dead, 341 wounded, and 37 missing. The Confederate casualties were nearly double, and 100 dead, 305 wounded, and 415 captured. 